Japan is facing an aging society, as everybody knows. So we really need to deploy a new technology to face these kind of challenges. And several、um, municipalities are working on creating a smart city initiative. And I think some of the actually small cities are very good at this because they are really in need of tackling this kind of challenges. They have to deliver, for example, medicines or food for elderly people living in an isolated island. So, for、mm-hmm. example, they deploy a lot of drone technologies or like new technologies. And also, Shibuya is start using some like smart mobility so that we can like easily go around. Hi, smart community friends. In this episode of the Smart Community Podcast, I have a lovely conversation with Miho Tanaka. Miho is the startup visa lead and director of Startup Welcome Service in Shibuya, Japan. Miho starts by telling us about her background and her passion for helping startups in Japan. She then tells us about the growth of investment in Japan, what a smart community is to her, a bit about the work she does with Startup Welcome Service before she discusses the focus on smart cities in Japan. Miho then shares with us the post COVID shift for communities and what that looks like in Japan. As well as the key considerations startups need to know to enter the Japanese market. We finish our chat discussing the emerging trends of silver tech for the aging society in Japan. As always, we hope you enjoy listening to this episode as much as we enjoyed making it. Welcome to the smart community, smart regions, smart towns, and smart cities. It's where we live. Work and play with smart communities. The future starts today. Big data, smart mobility, emerging trends galore. The Smart Community Podcast is what you're looking for. Hello, Miho. Lovely to have you on the podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thank you so for like, having me here today. Well, let's just jump straight in. And can you tell us about your background and what you're passionate about? Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, how nice to meet you, Miho, to all the audiences. And I am in charge of Shibuya's startup visa right now. And I'm passionate about welcoming international startup founders to start a business in Japan. And my background started、uh, with like working for startups. So I was working for several startups. And actually, one of the startups that I was working for. Went almost bankrupt. And then, like, <laughs> that was the first time that I started working for a government project for international startup founders.、Mm-hmm. So, right now, I am working for Shibuya City, but originally I was working for Tokyo Metropolitan Government Project. And that was the first time that I saw a lot of challenges that international startup founders face in Japan, including paperwork, like incorporation, all that, like,、huh. Red tapes, like all、mm-hmm. the like traditional sort of like or traditional、um, like discussion with traditional organizations. So, yeah, I am like now based on all the practical experiences that I went through with all the founders, I am supporting kind of self founders with a practical way in a better way.、Mm. No, cool. And I mean, one of the reasons I asked you to come on to the podcast was. Because I think it's,、uh, you know, we all talk a lot about Japan and Japan being a smart city. And I imagine that the startup space, you know, is full of technology and smart cities, kind of people trying to do stuff、uh, in the space. And having been in Japan or gone to Japan on a delegation, must have been, when was it, 2018,、uh, and meeting with a lot of traditional. Or smart city companies, but lots of, I guess, traditional hierarchy and, you know, meeting with CEOs and that type of thing.、Uh, I imagine you would be very busy in helping international startups get started because, I mean, starting anywhere that's not your home country would be quite difficult, I imagine. What are some of the, like, the big key challenges that startups face? I think、uh, I would say the speed is the big key challenge s here because like, I think、uh, Japanese,、uh, like, if, if startups want to start making a deal with、uh, corporations or traditional organizations, 
it takes longer than everybody expects, I think. So maybe in the other countries, maybe they can just get the NDA signed by or within just a week or two weeks. But in Japan, maybe it's going to take a few months at least. And signing the proper contract, it's going to easily take maybe a, like half a year. So most of the startups are like running out of cash before actually signing the official contract. So I think that speed is like something that these startup founders need to think about and consider before coming to Japan, I think. Mm-hmm. And I guess in the last few years, and obviously we've, got, we've had COVID in there, what kind of startups are becoming or are like most common? I guess like, you know, there's every startup is unique and different, but are there specific sectors that you see are, are really uh, growing within Japan? Mm-hmm. So I would say uh, the investment, the total amount of investment is growing in Japan. Mm-hmm. And most of the investment, I think, goes to SaaS and AI and also fintech. And mm-hmm. since I'm uh, in charge of the startup business in Shibuya, Tokyo, Tokyo government is specifically targeting a uh, fintech industry. And mm-hmm. also like Shibuya is the home for like Google, Stripe and Spotify and all these kind of tech giants. So uh, Shibuya's target is like, we are quite open, but our target will be mainly deep tech. So like mainly like SaaS AI. So mm-hmm. I think, yeah, um, these verticals are getting the main uh, industries in Japan, especially mm-hmm. in Tokyo, I would say. Mm-hmm. Now I realize we've gone deep. I want to go high again. Uh, and lift out and tell me what a smart community is to you. So since especially I'm working with Shibuya City and Shibuya City has been targeting uh, diversity for a long time. I would say smart community is the community that everybody can just pursue what they want to do regardless of their background or like, for example, nationality, genders, and like, yeah, the community Mm. that everybody can pursue what they want to do, I think. Mm, Yeah, the diversity and inclusion within a community, which is so key. And no, thank you. I I think that's really important because, you know, we talk a lot about uh, technology, but it's actually about the people at the end of the day. And, you know, the work that you're doing is in that deep technology. But at the end of the day, we want to really make sure that people can live within our communities and pursue you know, their wants, their desires, their needs within the community as well, no matter their background. So thank you. (laughs) Thank you. So tell me a little bit more about the work you do, like on a day-to-day basis. How do you deal with startups and do you facilitate those conversations with other uh, bigger companies? Thank you. So my day-to-day work starts with a lot of uh, consultation and like 30-minute call with a lot of founders. So since... Japanese market is still like a black box. Nobody knows where to go, what to do, and when they need to start a business. So to open up what they have to do and to open up this black box, I usually guide them through what kind of options they have in terms of visa or like incorporation strategy or based on their timeline what they should do now and within the next few months, what they should work on. It could be applying for a startup visa or they might just launch a company in Japan if they already have some corporate partners. And yeah, so since we started this project this April officially, and so we are just like six months old project, but Mm. we've already received over 400 inquiries from all over the world. So not only guiding the new founders through the process. We also support the founders who are already based in Japan. And we are still trying to figure out which corporation to collaborate with. But if we see some good match, I'm trying to be the not only the translator, but Mm. kind of person who can easily... The collaborator maybe, or like the integrator between the two, yeah. I would say a collaborator, integrator, yeah. Mm. Mm. So a collaboration will... Uh, accelerate that startup uh, journey and growth. Yeah, cool. And like we talk about Japan being a smart city, and I mean, one, would you consider Japan to be a smart city, or you know, is Japan? When I was there in 2018, it was like definitely a big focus for them. Is it still a, a big focus in Japan now? I would say so. Yes, of course. 
especially since like Japan is facing an aging society, as everybody knows. So we really need to deploy a new technology to face these kind of challenges. And several、um, municipalities are working on creating a smart city initiative. And I think some of the actually small cities are very good at this because they are really in need of tackling these kind of challenges. They have to deliver, for example, medicines or food for elderly people living in an isolated island. So, for、mm-hmm. example, they deploy a lot of drone technologies or like new technologies. And also, Shibuya is start using some like smart mobility so that we can easily go around. And yeah, so. Smart cities like initiatives growing fast. Yeah, no, I, I, I think like there's so much, I guess, happening within this space and within Japan and I mean around the world. But it's interesting, like with COVID, like the, I guess, shift in focus. What type of shift in focus? And obviously, Japan had the Olympics. Did you see any shift in focus from the stuff that was happening maybe pre COVID to now? Yes, I think a big shift was about remote work right now. So, like before COVID, everybody had to go to office every single day in the morning in a packed train. <laughs> It's famous. <laughs> After COVID, we all noticed that we can no longer go to office every day and we have to find an efficient way to remotely work in for the company. So, I think that technology is growing. Also, it's very easier for investors to also like see the change and like see the growth of this technology and also business model.、Mm-hmm. So, I think, yeah, that was the、uh, biggest sector that like grew after COVID, I think. And I guess, I mean, we're still in it, but do you think like remote working, do you think that will stay, stay around、uh, in Japan? I think so, especially I think big IT corporations, they already closed the office probably because they couldn't maintain the expensive rent, like office、mm. rent in a city center. So they can no longer go back to office anymore. Also,、mm. I think many people started thinking about the benefit of working from home, especially if they have family, it's easier for them to take care of their family members, like kids or like maybe elderly people members. So, yeah, I think、uh, it will stay definitely.、Mm. And thinking about this whole startup space and、uh, smart city space and smart community space within Japan, how do you think? I mean, currently, is there a lot of integration, I guess, between government? You know, I think it's some of the work you're doing between government and, I guess, industry and academia. Is that increasing in Japan now? Is that seen as something that's really important to? I guess, build this you know, future smart communities? Yes, of course. Yeah, I think it's increasing. And also, many governments are s t a r t working with corporates and like they are asking corporates to, for example, build a program, for example, acceleration program for startups.、Mm-hmm. And in regards to the academia, yes, of course. For example, Shibuya City started a Shibuya Startup University for like raising new. Entrepreneurs in Shibuya, and also,、mm-hmm. especially for example, from Tsukuba City in Kanto region, they are also like closely working with、uh, Tsukuba University, which is very famous for robotics. So,、mm-hmm. they are trying to integrate academia and government and also industries to actually create a new industries from their spaces. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. Okay, thinking about If I am a startup and I want to go to Japan and maybe I've got some smart city technology that I want to deploy, what are some of the key things that you need to think about when you're thinking about coming to Japan? I think they should really go to market strategies and also finding and defining the competitive edge against the others. So, as long as they can tap into the Japanese market as a like kind of First comer to the industry, then it's very easy to actually find a synergy with different corporations. And it's going to be easier to make partnerships. But if they are just like、uh, coming to Japan without enough research, then they will struggle because there are so many competitors already.、Mm. And because the Japanese market is quite big still. <laughs> so, researching about the landscape of Japan and also competitors. It's very important, I think. 
Mm, understanding the landscape and who else is there and but then also I guess being able to have that research behind you so then when the questions are asked you can really answer them of why you know you're the you're the one that should be chosen or should be partnered with right of course yeah 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 let's zoom to the future now and think about some of the emerging trends what are some of the emerging trends that people aren't talking about enough emerging trend i would say silver tech which is like maybe for aging society silver is maybe like silver means are like elderly people with a great gray hair right <laughs> so yeah. yeah since they don't use a lot of digital devices compared to us but i uh, like also, like, but I think majority of them actually have smartphones and like they use app. So, yeah, I think it's emerging right now, but there should be more um, solutions and also digital technologies to solve and also like bridge that gap of like digital devices and also like digital solutions, like elderly people, I think. Mm-hmm. Silver tech. I like that name. That's a really interesting emerging trend and something I think is um, really important because, you know, Japan has aging population, but so, and a super aging population, I believe, but the rest of the world also has the same thing, right? And eventually we will all have to use that technology, silver technology, as we move forward. No, that's really interesting. And yeah, something when I was in Japan definitely was spoken about a lot. Not it's so, sure there was a lot of solutions, but there was lots of thinking about that and how we adapt the technology and to have different channels for people to be able to use the technology appropriately or you know to suit their needs and not just make it so then we could use it, but if they can't use it, then they can't get what they need out of it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. Yes. Also, the market is quite big because Japanese population is about 120 million in total right now. And out of that, almost 30% is over 65 years old. So basically, they can target 36 million like silver tech industry. So that's a good market, I think, test idea. Yeah, that's interesting too. Like, you know, it's good for society, but also it's an economic decision, right? It's a big market out there that can be tapped into and Japan's a place to do it. Yep. People with money, people that need the service. Interesting. Yeah. I like that silver tech. Okay. Well, thank you, Miho, for coming onto the podcast. I really appreciate your time and I really enjoyed having this conversation with you. I just have one last question, which is how can people connect with you? Ah, so I am always on LinkedIn, so please feel free to find Miho Tanaka on LinkedIn. Excellent. We'll put the link in the show notes so people can click away and find you. Thanks again for coming onto the podcast, and I look forward to talking soon. Yeah, thank you so much, Zoe. Thank you. Bye. The Smart Community Podcast is brought to you by My Smart Community. If you're trying to deal with disruption, not sure what technologies to buy, need to facilitate genuine collaboration, then we can help. Email hello at mysmart.community or head to www.mysmart.community forward slash consulting. Thanks so much for listening to the Smart Community Podcast. Show notes for this episode and all other episodes are available on our website, mysmart.com dot community slash podcast if you have any questions for us or any of our guests you can email hello at mysmart.community you can also find us on the socials we are on linkedin and twitter at smartcomhq that's com with two m's if you are enjoying the podcast please hit subscribe so you never miss an episode And we would love for you to leave us a rating and review at wherever you listen. This really helps us reach more ears and eyes. So thank you for your support. As always, we hope you enjoyed listening to this episode as much as we enjoyed making it. The Smart Community.
Community Podcast is what you're looking for.